Hello everybody, thank you for joining this webinar. I am Elena Papagiorgiou and today I will be guiding you through this webinar in which we will employ a root service to identify and map land substance in Mexico City using Copernicus Sentinel-1 data. So let us begin by having a quick look on the summary and the main steps of the webinar. During the webinar, which will last for 1 hour and 30 minutes, I will firstly describe the study area, the problem of land subsidence that persists there, and I will give you some insights on the background and the causes of subsidence. Uh, then I will continue by giving a short description of the Sentinel-1 data we use to monitor land subsidence and the interferometry method we apply for this case. Next, uh, I will introduce you to root service that provides all the capabilities and support to help users on Earth observation applications such as uh, land substance monitoring. And uh, after the ending of the theoretical part, we will proceed with a practical exercise uh, by using Roos platform. And there I will show you how you can easily perform such a monitoring uh, in Roos service since it provides you with free access to Sentinel data, the storage of a huge amount of data with the provision of virtual machines, and the free use of open source toolboxes. At last, there will be a question and answer session uh, where you can pose your questions. However, I would uh, kindly ask you to submit your questions also during the webinar, so we can reply to as many questions as possible. So, uh, let's focus on the study area, which is uh, Mexico City. Uh, Mexico City is sinking over the last century and last substance is a severe problem there. The city is built on highly compressible clays and by reason of strong uh, groundwater extraction, a total substance of more than 9 meters has been observed during the last 100 years resulting in damages to buildings, streets, uh, sidewalks, stormwater drains. The collapse in the central region of the city reached 10 meters uh, at the end of the 20th century, while current subsidence rates uh, lie between 5 and uh, 40 centimeters per year. Groundwater-related substance often results in major damage to urban areas uh, in Mexico City, as you, he as you see here in this slide, the buildings interact with the settlement and uh, cause cracking, uh, tilting and uh, other major damage. In many places, uh, large sinkholes open up uh, as well as surface cavities. So let's now continue by having a, a brief presentation about Sentinel-1 data we will use and the interferometry method we will apply later in the exercise to monitor and study land substance in Mexico City. The Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission, based on a constellation of two satellites that operate in Simbad, is used to track changes in land and to monitor ground movements. The revisit cycle of six days on a global scale provides us with a high level of service reliability that is really important uh, for Earth observation and risk management applications. Sentinel-1 data are acquired in three swaths uh, using the terrain observation with the progressive scanning SAR imaging technique, in other words, top SAR, uh, as you see here in this uh, video. And Sentinel-1 operates in four exclusive acquisition modes that is stream up, uh, interferometric wide, extra wide and wave and for each mode SAR products are raw data, single look complex data comprising complex imagery with amplitude and phase, ground range detected uh, data with multi-looked intensity and level to ocean data for retrieved geophysical parameters of the ocean. Interferometry wide is Sentinel's primary operational mode over land and for interferometric uh, techniques we use SLC data exploiting the complex imagery of uh, both amplitude and phase. So let's explain a bit more 
uh, uh, the interferometric white swath, uh, which is the main acquisition mode over land and satisfies the majority of service requirements. It acquires data with a 250 km swath at 5 meters by 20 meters spatial resolution and captures three subswaths using the TOPSAR imaging technique, uh, as you see here in the slide, the uh, IW1, 2 and 3. The interferometric wide SLC products contain one image per subswath and one per polarization channel. So uh, for a single polarization, we will have a total of three images in an interferometric wide product or we will have uh, six uh, if we have a dual polarization channel. So um, its subswath image consists of a series of bursts, as you see here with a red rectangular, where each burst has been processed as a separate SLC image. So if you see here in the subswath 3, we have nine bursts that uh, are included in azimuth time order and uh, they have a black field demarcation in between. So today we will uh, use Sentinel-1 data for applying SAR interferometry. So what is SAR interferometry? In SAR technique uh, is used to detect and monitor surface deformation phenomena. A SAR signal contains amplitude and phase information. Amplitude is the strength of the radar response and phase is the fraction of one complete sine wave cycle. Uh, in other words, uh, the phase of the SAR image is determined primarily by the distance between the satellite antenna and the ground targets. So what interferometric SAR exploits is the phase difference between two complex radar SAR observations of the same area taken from slightly different sensor positions and extracts distance information about the Earth's terrain. By combining the phase of two images, we produce an interferogram where phase is correlated to the terrain topography and deformation. So if the phase shift related to topography is removed from the interferogram, the difference between the resulting products will show surface deformation patterns occurred between the two acquisition dates. And this methodology is called differential interferometry. So what we get in this case is a differential interferogram showing ground deformation. Here are some results of INSAR monitoring in Mexico City with uh, different sensors and different monitoring periods. In the middle we see the uh, SAR interferometric substance map for uh, 1996 with the use of ERS and we have a rate of subsidence rates of 5 centimeters per year. To the right, uh, the interferogram shows the surface deformation for 2013 with uh, the use of RADARSAT 2 and with a rate of uh, 20 centimeters per year, uh, as you see with the red color. And to the left, the results present the ground deformation with the use of Sentinel-1 data for the period 2014. And uh, you see with the red color, some areas of the city subside with rates up to 2.5 centimeters per month. So what is RUS and what uh, is offering? RUS stands for Research and User Support for Sentinel Core Products. It's a service uh, funded by European Commission, managed by ESA and operated by CSI and its partners. RUS is freely available to everyone from first-time data users um, as general public uh, students to specialist users such as researchers, scientists, uh, public authorities. Uh, RUS offers uh, a team of experts on Earth observation applications and Sentinel sensors to help users exploit Sentinel data resources. It provides a team of experts supporting users through the use of virtual machines with processing facilities. 
and a team of experts to integrate your own algorithms on the existing virtual machines. Furthermore, uh, Roos offers a scalable platform in a powerful computing environment, pre-installed uh, virtual machines and free open source toolboxes. It also provides an adaptable working environment which allows users to develop and prototype their own algorithms and tools. And also, uh, regular training sessions are organized for all kinds of users with online tutorials and webinars accessible to all users and face-to-face -face training sessions to handle and process data and uh, train the trainers events for future trainers. So uh, how to find and uh, uh, how to access uh, Roo service for uh, cloud resources, tools uh, and data and support, you can visit the Rus Copernicus uh, website where you can uh, register to Rus service, you can um, request a virtual machine or additional support and if you're interested in training you can visit the Rus Copernicus uh, training website where you can have some information for upcoming training sessions uh, that is face-to-face -face or webinars where you can learn how to download, uh, process, analyze and visualize Sentinel data for a variety of applications in different thematic areas. Also, you can visit us in YouTube where you can find some dedicated videos uh, such as uh, how to download Sentinel data, how to register to Roos service or how to request a virtual machine, so please feel free to, to visit us. And so now we proceed with a practical exercise. In this case, our processing will be divided in uh, four different parts, since uh, I want to show you some basic uh, steps of the processing and also for you to be more familiar with the intermediate products of each step. So after we have downloaded uh, our Sentinel data and import them in SNAP, we begin with the first processing part with uh, INSAR analysis, where finally we get, uh, we obtain the phase measurements between uh, the two images and here the final product will be the interferogram, the phase difference between the two images uh, that contains uh, both topography and deformation. Uh, while here we can have um, also a coherence image estimation. Then uh, we will continue with the second processing part of differential interferometry and the study of ground deformation. The output product here will be the differential interferogram uh, that will contain only the deformation after we have removed the topography from uh, the interferogram. And in the third the processing part, uh, we will include the phase unwrapping in order to obtain the displacement uh, measurements. Of course, uh, then there will be a, a geocoding of the product in order to finally produce the terrain corrected uh, a displacement uh, map. Our input data set for this exercise will be uh, two images of 2016. The first one uh, is of June and the second one is of September, so they have a, a time difference of three months. To proceed, we access the Roos platform and in the upper right corner we have to log in and through your dashboard right here. Uh, also here you can request a new user service or you can chat uh, with support uh, desk. So we access the virtual machine and here we are in the Roos Linux environment with some pre-installed softwares we open SNAP toolbox, which is the um, easy software for processing Sentinel data. 
and the first thing we have to do is to to open our uh, star images which have been added to the product explorer pane so if uh, I opened, uh, if I expand uh, my first image uh, you see here that we have the metadata of the image uh, some information about the processing time, the orbits, the is it entangles, uh, or any other information you may need. And uh, if we expand here the bands, we can see that we uh, first have uh, three images, uh, one per each subswath. So we have uh, IW1, 2, and 3 in the polarization channel VV As, so here you see that um, the uh, intestine image here is a, a virtual a virtual band uh, that means that uh, it's not stored is uh, on the fly calculated and uh, what we have actually here uh, is uh, the bands I and Q uh, which uh, correspond to the real to the real and imaginary uh, parts of the complex data. So the I and Q bands are the bands that are actually in the product and the virtual intensity here band is uh, to assist you in working with uh, complex data. So if uh, we open uh, one image uh, you can open it by right click and open image window or you can also double click it We open the image in the view window here in the, to the right and um, as you can see the image has a number of uh, bars so if we count from top to bottom we get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 bar, bars uh, within this image so uh, Mexico City uh, is located uh, around here almost with uh, the white color and uh, is included between the bursts uh, 3 and 5 so what we have first to do is to uh, split uh, our images and to work only with uh, the, the three parts that uh, Mexico City is included uh, in this way we reduce the processing time in the following uh, uh, steps and uh, such a process uh, usually is recommended when the analysis is focused only over a specific area uh, and not the complete uh, scene so we go to Raider, Sentinel-1 tops and Sentinel-1 top split And here we have to set some parameters. Uh, the first one here is to select the input image. So we select our first image of June. Then we have to set the name of the output product. Uh, I use the default that the software um, produces. And then here you can see uh, that the software adds a suffix of the process we perform. Next we have to define the output directory and for uh, the processing parameters tab here we have to select the subswath Mexico City is included so we select uh, the IW3 we select the polarization and then we have to define the bars that Mexico City is included so we have to drag the arrows from 3 to 5 you can see it also here when dragging the cursors and then if you zoom in right here we can see with uh, the red the rectangular the extent of the SAR image and with the white color the selected uh, bars the three selected bars so if we run the um, the operator of uh, top split we can get the splitted product and if we open it here we open the bands we see that we have only the uh, IW3 subswath one image 
So here is our final splitted product with the three uh, bars. Uh, so also if we zoom in here, I'm sorry, you can see uh, the black fill uh, demarcation in between the bars. So next is to do the same process, the split process for the second image. I have already prepared it. So if we uh, see here, uh, the output product of SNAP, uh, an output product in SNAP is um, comprised of two files, a data file and a DIM file. So what we have to uh, insert in SNAP is the DIM file. So here is our second image. Let's see if everything is all right. Okay. Okay. So uh, next, if you want to synchronize your views just to th see them together, you can go to Window and Tile uh, Horizontally. And then you can go to Navigation. Let's do it again. Okay, you can go open again the second one. And you can press uh, the two uh, bottom buttons here so you can synchronize uh, your views. After the split pre-processing step, uh, we will continue with uh, the main processing. Of course, you can follow a manual step-by-step -step process, uh, but uh, when we use and work with a huge amount of data, uh, it's better to proceed with an automatic processing of the images. So in this case, we have to use the Graph Builder tool, which is right here. And uh, you can see that we have uh, a top and a bottom panel. In the top panel, uh, we design the graph of the processing chain we want to follow by adding um, operators for each processing step and then in the bottom panel we set the parameters for each operator we add so now we are um, ready to perform the first uh, uh, step of our processing which is INSAR uh, analysis in order to produce the interferogram and the coherence map for this, we have to design a graph by adding the operators for its processing step. And we begin by the read operator. As you see, uh, the two default operators are read and write. Read for input images and write for output products. So since we have two images, we have to add a new read operator. To do this, we go right click, input, output and read. And the next step is to, um, to apply the orbit files in Sentinel-1 products in order to provide accurate satellite position and velocity information. So add radar and apply orbit file. We do the same for the second image. So radar and apply orbit file and then we have to connect the operator so we drag the red arrow from read to apply orbit next uh, orbit file and next step uh, will be to co-register the two sentinel one images uh, co-registration ensures the that each crown target contributes to the same pixel in range and azimuth in both the master and the slave image. So for this reason, the second image, which is a slave, will be co-registered with respect to the first image, which is the master. And for this uh, reason, for this process, we use back geocoding operator that co-registers two split products of the same subswath uh, using the orbits of the two products and a digital elevation model. So we go to add, input, a radar, co-registration, S1 tops co-registration and back geocoding. 
and then we connect the operators okay okay and next we have to add the enhanced spectral diversity operators that follows uh, back geocoding the ESD approach exploits the data at the overlapped area of the adjacent bars and then performs range and azimuth correction for every bars so it's a refinement step and we go to the same path radar co-registration S1 tops co-registration and enhanced spectral diversity and we connect and at this stage we uh, will produce the interferogram between the interferometric pair uh, I mean the master and slave while we can also uh, have a coherence image estimation from the stack of the co-register complex images to add the interferogram operator we go to add radar interferometric products and interferogram and we connect and then we have to uh, apply the top sardi burst operator uh, since our image is consisted of a series of bursts we debarf the image in order to uh, produce a continuous coverage of the ground so to add the operator we go to radar sentinel one tops and tops are debarfed okay and that is uh, our uh, processing chain for uh, INSAR uh, analysis and then we connect with the output product here the right so um, now we have to go and set the parameters for each operator in the first read operator here we have to select the master image the splitted product so it's the first image of June then in the second input image we have to select the slave image the split product in the apply orbit file we select uh, the precise orbits which are available uh, 20 days after the sensing and uh, also here we have um, you can also select do not fail if your orbit file is not found we do the same for the second image okay and then here in the back geocoding uh, operator okay uh, here we can see that um, we can select a digital elevation model here we use the SRTM and uh, we'll use uh, these default parameters for the interpolation method and uh, also here areas outside uh, the dam or in the sea uh, may be optionally masked out uh, so uh, it's better to select it and then when uh, enhanced spectral diversity uh, follows back to coding uh, it's better to select output DRAM and the mode phase in order to improve the co-registration then in the ESD approach here okay uh, it's better to leave the um, the default parameters Uh, in the interferogram formation step we shall remove the flat earth phase uh, which is the phase present in the interferometric signal due to the curvature of the reference surface and uh, is estimated uh, using the orbital and the metadata information and then subtracted from the complex interferogram then we can leave uh, the parameters as they are 
but also here we can change the coherence uh, range and azimuth window sizes the default uh, are 10 by 2 but uh, I will increase it so you see here when I, I change the range window size the azimuth changes automatically so in this case uh, we increase it in order to get uh, a better estimation of the coherence then in the top sort burst uh, tab here we select the VV polarization channel and uh, finally in the right tab we have to set the name of the output product uh, please uh, also check here that we have um, new uh, suffixes for the operators we have uh, added like the orbit files, the co-registration, the interferogram and the bar stick and then we have to define the output directory, the output folder and after we have uh, set all the parameters we must save the graph so let's save it as graph process one okay and then we run the processing uh, chain so I won't do it I have already prepared the output product this process should take around 20 to 25 minutes depending on your machine so what we get in this occasion is the debarsted interferogram if we expand the, the bands here we see that we have two new uh, bands in the products, uh, the interferometric phase band and the coherence band. So, if we open the phase band, we see here uh, our interferogram, which uh, represents um, the phase difference between the two images. And uh, also, here you can see that after the bursting, we have a spatially continuous image. That means that any subsetting of the image should be applied from this step forward. And uh, we can see also uh, our coherence map, uh, which is an indirect measure of the quality of the uh, interferogram. And uh, the coherence shows uh, how similar its pixel is between the slave and the master images, saying the scale from 0 to 1. The areas of high coherence appear uh, bright uh, um, and areas of poor coherence uh, appear dark. So in this image uh, you see that uh, the areas, the black areas that are closer to zero uh, represent the vegetated areas while the white uh, areas that um, are closer to, to one uh, represent correspond to uh, to buildings and to, to to urban areas with this interferometric processing part uh, we produce the interferogram which contains both topography and deformation so now we will continue with the second processing part of the differential interferometry for this step we will design a processing chain where the final output would be the differential interferogram that contains only the deformation. We open uh, a new graph builder tool and here the first step is to remove the topographic induced phase from the debarsted interferogram. To do this we go to add radar interferometric products and topophase removal. Then, as the um, original star images contain uh, inherent speckle noise, multi-look processing is applied to reduce the speckle appearance and to improve the image interpretability. To add the operator, we go to add radar and multi-look. And then, we, um, we will perform phase filtering of the interferogram in order to reduce the phase noise for visualization uh, purposes or to aid the phase unwrapping which I will show you in the next step so we go to radar interferometric filtering and gold sign phase filtering okay and then we have to save the output product we connect the graph okay 
and then uh, the final step in this processing uh, part is to export the data for uh, SNAFU processing in order to apply uh, the phase unwrapping. To export the data in the format compatible for SNAFU processing, we go to Add, Radar, Interferometric, Unwrapping and SNAFU Export. And we connect. OK. Then we go to set the parameters for each operator. So in the read uh, tab here, we select uh, the deborsted interferogram. In the top of phase removal here tab, we have to uh, we use a digital elevation model in order to remove uh, the topography from the interferogram. Uh, in this case, we use uh, the SRTM three seconds. And also here we have the option to uh, create some new bands. So um, this has to do with um, your needs, of course. Uh, in this case, we will create um, um, a band containing the topography. So we select output topographic phase band, just to show you um, the topography, the phase uh, that corresponds to topography that we remove. With uh, the multi-look operator here, uh, we can get a square pixel of the image, and we can also um, ha we also have the option to to change the number of range and azimuth loops. So here the default values are four to one. By increasing the multi-look uh, factor here, we can we can smooth the face. Uh, but since we get uh, bigger pixel sizes, uh, we get a worse spatial resolution. So I will increase it to 4 by 2 here also. You can see that if we change the number of range looks, the azimuth looks change uh, um, the changes automatically. And then we get a mean square pixel of uh, almost 27 meters. So then um, in the Goldstein phase filtering, uh, we use um, the default parameters uh, proposed uh, by the software. And then we have to save the um, output product. So um, we set the name of the output product. And here you can see the new suffixes that have been added uh, accordingly to its uh, operator we have added. Then we have to define the output directory. And then we go to SNAFU export tab where we have to, um, to set the target folder of the SNAFU um, process. For the statistical cost mode, we use the uh, DEFO for deformation. The initial uh, method, we use the minimal uh, cost flow algorithm. And here, here we have the um, we can change the number of tile rows and tile columns. Uh, the uh, since uh, unwrapping uh, is a computationally demanding process, there is this option here to process your scene in a number of patches. So the default is uh, ten by ten. Uh, that means 10 patches in range and 10 patches in uh, azimuth. So we end up with uh, having 100 patches. So this can introduce um, or cause artifacts uh, that might result in unwrapping errors between the patches. And to avoid that, we uh, we um, we let one patch one by one to, uh, to perform we uh, to perform uh, the the unwrapping in the whole area at once. So also I can change this to one by one. Also the number of tile rows and columns um, depends on the memory allocated to, to your machine. And then we save the graph. Okay, let's uh, save it as graph process too. And then uh, we click run. This uh, process um, should take around a couple of minutes. I have already prepared the output product. 
so if we open it uh, this is the the multi-looked uh, differential and filter uh, differential interferogram so here we see that we have uh, the bands of uh, phase topo phase and coherence so if I open the topo phase band here we see the topography we remove from the different from the debarsted interferogram um, using a digital elevation model then we can see the phase here okay here is um, the differential interferogram um, which is represented in the form of fringes uh, that vary as we see here if we go to color manipulation in the histogram okay the values of the fringes uh, vary between minus pi and pi and uh, then I suppose you have understood that the different extent of the image the multi-looked here interferogram is having a square pixel so it is closer to map geometry and in this way it's easier to interpret it uh, also uh, what we have here is the face which corresponds to the formation so where the fringes are closer uh, denser the deformation is uh, bigger then if we also open the uh, coherence band which is closer to map geometry uh, you can see um, here that we have uh, the uh, areas of um, low coherence, the black areas and the bright areas of uh, good coherence that uh, correspond to urban, uh, to urban area to the, to the urban area of Mexico City so if we synchronize our views okay here we can see that in the areas of low coherence which correspond to vegetation uh, the phase um, the phase measurements are not uh, accurate so the results can be um, accurate only where the coherence values are higher here we can also see in the middle right here or here in the right side some areas of uh, not accurate phase measurements so now we proceed with the third processing part of the exercise with uh, phase unwrapping and displacement, uh, phase, displacement measurements so if we open um, if we open the snap view folder uh, where the data were exported for SNAFU processing here we can see some files uh, like uh, the phase uh, the coherence and um, we have here also a header file of the unwrapped phase uh, which we will use to import back the data to SNAFU and then we have here a configuration file of uh, SNAFU in which all the processing commands and parameters are stored um, we can open it okay and um, when SNAFU tries to create a log file of the processing then an error occurs so we have to command the log file uh, the line and the log file is not generated so we go here and we place a comment in front of l the log file and then to continue with uh, the phase unwrapping we open a terminal window and we navigate to the same path of SNAFU and from the configuration file right here we have to copy command to call SNAFU so we copy and paste it in the terminal and then we uh, execute the command so I won't uh, run this process because um, it takes around 8 minutes so what we get in this case the results are stored in the same uh, path so here you can see that we have uh, the final results of unwrapping 
the unwrapped um, uh, image. So next step uh, is to import the data to Snap. So in this case, we open uh, a new graph builder tool. And uh, I will load uh, an already uh, defined uh, graph. But don't worry, I will explain you uh, its operator. And then you can have some more information on the tutorial you will get uh, if you want to repeat the exercise. So here we have two read uh, input. So in the first read input is for um, wrapped image and the second for the unwrapped image. So here in the first uh, input image we have to select the wrapped face of the differential interferogram. In the second read tab we have to select the unwrapped uh, data. Uh, so we go to the Snapview folder and we select the header file of the unwrapped image. I'm sorry. Okay, it's already here. And then we have to add the operator of uh, Snapview import, uh, which is the operator that imports the data from uh, Snapview. Uh, you can also here check uh, do not save wrapped interferogram in the target product. Since we have uh, since we have performed this phase unwrapping, uh, now we can continue by converting the phase to displacement and by producing our displacement uh, map. So we add the operator phase to displacement and uh, here you see that there are no uh, parameters to be defined. So uh, so phase along the, the line of sight is uh, converted to meters. And uh, finally we save our uh, output product which is a displacement map. We uh, set the name of the output product. We have the new here suffixes for unwrapping a displacement. And then we define the output directory and we save the graph. Okay. And then we can click run. So the output product, which I will show you right now, it's the displacement map. Okay. And if we expand it here, the bands, we see that we have only one band of displacement. So here our, is our displacement uh, map. Now we can um, work a little bit with the colors to, to change the colors and then you can go to the color manipulation tab here and from basic editor you can choose another color palette on from a table here you can change the colors and the values or you can go to sliders and uh, there I can show you how we can create uh, a color palette with um, the colors we may wish. So we can uh, first uh, remove some uh, slider, sliders. Okay then, and then we can uh, give um, the color of uh, we can give the color of red for uh, of blue for uplift for positive values, or for red for negative values, and here for the um, the zero value we can give uh, the white color, and then we can change the. Um, the values here of um, the uh, deformation so we can change to be from 0 0.1 to okay didn't change so go again and then uh, minus 0.1 for uh, substance and then we can um, we can distribute the sliders evenly between the higher and the lowest uh, 
value. Okay, and here is our uh, final uh, displacement map. Uh, we can go to the pixel info here tab and we can see that the red uh, areas here they have negative values so they represent uh, subsidence and then uh, the um, the blue uh, areas represent um, uh, uplift having uh, positive values you can see the values right here the displacement values in meters since our product here is in SAR geometry we have to project uh, the data from SAR geometry to a selected uh, map geometry so in this case we go to radar right here geometric terrain correction and range doppler terrain correction and here in the input output uh, parameters uh, tab we have to select as input image the displacement product then uh, next we have to set the name of the output product uh, also uh, see here the new suffix for terrain correction and then we have to define the output directory in the processing parameters tab uh, we can leave the uh, default proposed by the software uh, however uh, I will uh, change here the pixel spacing to uh, 100 uh, in order to have uh, a faster processing which I will show you right now and then as you see here uh, we um, use for this procedure uh, this procedure involves a DEM uh, so the final results are also orthorectified so if we run the process here okay we see our final product the orthorectified image of uh, displacement uh, measurements uh, we can change the color palette uh, we can import here a predefined color palette um, as we created before so after we have created the color palette we can save it right here and then we can import it again from this pattern so here is our final uh, orthorectified image showing the displacement uh, uh, displacement patterns uh, in Mexico City um, of course uh, after that we can proceed with uh, some post-processing of the uh, of the image however uh, such a step is not um, included in this exercise so uh, I can show you um, the result after uh, removing the low coherence areas uh, from the um, from the image okay so here uh, is the final result uh, without uh, by leaving only the accurate phase measurements so in this uh, occasion um, our results uh, are more reliable and accurate and we can interpret uh, the deformation patterns um, uh, with a more uh, robust manner so um, to summarize um, in this exercise uh, we were focused on interferometric processing of sentinel tops data we followed uh, a straightforward processing approach that has been uh, extensively tested in different uh, sites and our goal was to finally obtain the displacement patterns in Mexico City of course the final results can be enhanced by uh, post-processing uh, like to define reference areas or to mask incoherent values just like the results, uh, the results I saw you, uh, I just saw you here, and uh, for um, for this we envisaged to demonstrate these steps in a follow-up webinar. So, if you want to repeat the exercise, uh, you can log in to the Roost platform and to request a new user service. And then you have to add the code for this exercise. Thank you for joining. 
um, and we are available to reply uh, in the future. Uh, you can contact us at any time. So uh, thank you for joining this webinar.